Welcome to another edition of Pastor Kumui's Illustrations. But you see, what are the things that actually bring temptation? The causes that we can trace and identify so we can be very careful in our lives. I'm going to very quickly run through eight things. Number one, inordinate affection or exaggerated desire for a perceived personal need may be used of the devil to bring temptation into our lives. When you have inordinate affection for something you want that thing so much that uh, you are not thinking of the consequence of the paths you want to take it may become a real serious temptation in uh, numbers chapter 11 numbers chapter 11 from verse 4 and the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us flesh to eat? We'll remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers and the melons and the, and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. But our soul, now our soul, is dried away. There is nothing at all be beside this manner before our eyes that became a serious temptation they remembered egypt when your mind looks back and you begin to say i remember when i was in the world i remember when i used to go to those dancing halls i remember when i was uh, spending my life the way i wanted and there was no check and there was no control be careful as you are bringing those things back to mind it can become a cause of temptation that your mind will be leaning that way, your affection will be leaning that way, and you may not know when you eventually fall. Number two, we find in Genesis chapter 30, Genesis chapter 30, when there is uncontrolled desire to have children by all means, or when there is uncontrolled desire to have healing by all means, and you're searching for that healing, and no matter where they say that healing is, you will go there. That becomes a source of irresistible temptation. Look at Genesis chapter 30 verse 1. And when uh, Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Je uh, Rachel uh, envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. When you want children that much, you want children seriously to the point you are saying, except I have this sin, I will die. If that thing can become a serious source of temptation unto you. That then you go to places you shouldn't go. And you do things you shouldn't do. And you become partners with people you shouldn't become partners to. Number three is the love of money. When you join the mad rush in this world to acquire property, that thing becomes poisonous bait of temptation that has destroyed many people already. And if you are not careful, that thing to you can destroy you. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich, that is, they will be rich by all means. They will be rich urgently, quickly, suddenly. They want to be rich right now. They fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful laws which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Be careful therefore when you find that every time you are thinking about money, morning, afternoon and evening, instead of uh, looking at your Bible and saying, Lord, give me what you want to give me. I'm waiting for you. I will seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and I'm sure that all the other things you will add unto me. If the love of money takes over your heart, it's going to be a serious source of temptation. Number four, when there is the lust of the flesh. And there is a terrible impatience to have a life partner. I must get married now. No matter what happens, even if I have to compromise, no matter what one I will have to do, I must get married now. I'm fed up with this single life. I cannot be a single lady anymore, a single man anymore. I want a woman. I want a man immediately. That thing can be very dangerous and very serious too. In Judges chapter 14, 
Judges chapter 14, verse 3. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among uh, all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. When you say no, it doesn't matter whether they are Muslim or celeb, whether they are apostolic or whatever they are, whether they drink water or they burn incense, so that's not a problem now. I'm not talking about religion now. I want to get married immediately. Uh, I don't want anybody to disturb my life. That thing can become a serious a bait of temptation for you. Number five, when there is unchecked tendency, to please men and to be like the people of the world. That thing to you can become a serious temptation. That's what happened uh, to the children of Israel in First uh, Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. We don't want to be peculiar. We don't want to be different. We want to be like all the other people do something for us. You see that tendency, unchecked tendency to please men or to want to be like the world, that thing can become a serious temptation. Number six, when there is pressure, unreasonable influence of our intimate relations and friends when our relations are looking at our lives and they say they are pitying us and they say they are crying and they say that why are we still Christians look at the way you are and look at your family and look at the things happening to you why are you still going to church why are you still believing in holiness and this kind of life when the pressure becomes much and that pressure influences unreasonable be very careful at that time temptation is coming in Job chapter 2 Job chapter 2 verse 9 then said the wife that's the closest relation relative unto him dost thou still retain that in integrity cause God and die what a temptation uh, they had gone through a lot and now the wife that should be supporting him encouraging him he said uh, why uh, she said why are you still waiting why are you still wanting to serve the Lord uh, what else can happen to you cause God and die even if it means hell damn the consequence and do whatever you want to do a great great temptation be very careful when you are going back now to your people when you became born again many years ago you were totally with the Lord and the people of the Lord and your people were complaining at that time we don't see you anymore you have gone with Christ you have gone with the church but now you are going back to them and their influence upon you now is becoming very very great remember that can become a source of temptation number seven when discouragement has come and you are yielding to that discouragement discouragement can be used as a tool in the hand of the devil to bring temptation unto you in jeremiah chapter 20 jeremiah chapter 20 reading from verse 9 then i said i will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name you see that discouragement had come and the temptation was coming to Jeremiah, saying, of all your prophesying, of all the things you are telling the children of Israel, are they converted? Have they, been, have they come back to the Lord? Then discouragement came and he was saying, no, I will not make mention of him anymore. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I, I could not stay. But then another thing that brings a temptation is hypocrisy. When we, are, when we become hypocritical, and we're just uh, paying lip service unto the Lord. And we're not genuine in our serving the Lord. That hypocrisy can become a source of great temptation. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. And, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession. And came back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought his satin part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. 
But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not in thine own power? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Uh, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Actually, hypocrisy was a problem of Ananias and Sapphira. And therefore, they brought themselves into a net. Temptation brings us into a net. That's the reason we ought to watch. That's the reason we ought to be careful. So that we do not allow all these various causes of temptation uh, to uh, run after us and take us. And then we become ensnared. In Job chapter 18. Job chapter 18 verses 7 and 8. The steps of his strength shall be straightened. And his own counsel shall cast him down. His own lust, his own decision, his own counsel, the advice he gives himself, and the wrong advice the people are giving unto him will cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet. His own loss has drawn him away. His own loss has enticed him. He is cast into a net by his own feet. He waketh upon a snare. By the time he will wake up, by the time he will realize, it's in the snare already. It's in the net of the fisherman already. It's in the trap of the hunter already. It's in the hold of the devil already. I pray God will give us the grace to conquer. And we will conquer in Jesus. I hope you have been blessed by this edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Please don't let this illustration die. Pass it on to others and you could be of help to someone somewhere. Till we meet next week again for another edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Remain blessed.